Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming for the, to the Security Spotlight. I'm Mike Aiello, Director of Product Management for Security and Privacy. So we've got four things that myself and my colleagues are going to cover. We're going to talk about our progress in security and privacy over the last couple years, how we think about trust and what we believe as a cloud provider, some new product announcements that we're excited to share with you, and we're going to give an update on our partners in the overall ecosystem. So we've made some great progress in the last few years on security. Secure by default has been a key design principle as we've built Google Cloud and our cloud products. We were recently recognized by Forrester as a leader in security and the leader in security strategy. And look, the reason I wanted to highlight this is that the reality is three years ago, we probably wouldn't have been on this slide. So we're very excited about the progress that's happened and the acceleration that's continuing. But that said, it, you know, it's nice to get some external validation from Forrester and Gartner and our other, our other analyst colleagues. But the real evidence here is improving the security of our customers and how that trust in Google and that security ex is accelerating. So I want to spend the next couple minutes just talking through some of our customers. And if you're here today, thank you. So I want to highlight several customers here who have provided public examples or statements on how they're using Google Cloud security products to make their enterprises and their platforms secure. These customers have gone on record that Google Cloud is making them more secure. So we're very happy to have them, and thank you if you're here today. Next, we wanted to highlight some of our customers in the financial services sector. And as you know, these are among the most security conscious, security sensitive, highly scrutinized, highly regulated organizations in the world. And they've chosen to put their trust in Google Cloud, and we're very happy to have them as our customers. Finally, I wanted to highlight some recent customers in the healthcare sector. Again, these are very highly regulated organizations. They're very security conscious. And they're literally managing some of the most sensitive data that exists, period. We're very, to hap we're very happy to have them as our customers. But enough from me. I wanted to bring up Mike, the Chief Information Security Officer from the state of Arizona. Arizona is one of our seven G states who have deeply partnered with Google. And we're going to hear from Mike about how Arizona is using Google Cloud to protect citizen data in Arizona. And uh, why don't you come up, Mike, and tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Thank you, Mike. Hey, thank you. You bet. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Mike Letman. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer for the great state of Arizona. Uh, as Mike said, we are the seventh G state in the nation. Um, we made decision that we wanted to improve our productivity uh, amongst our organizations, we're a diversified state or a decentralized state. So basically our agencies act independently. So we wanted to figure out how can we can collaborate better? How can we build efficiencies and economies of scale? Our governor made it very clear he's a businessman. So he wanted to drive productivity and, and drive efficiencies and do it at a lower cost if possible as well. If we're cost neutral, that was gonna be okay. Cost was not our driving factor, it was productivity. So we uh, made a decision to move to the Google Suite. Uh, right now we have, uh, and this is for the executive branch uh, within the government, three branches of government, government, for those of you that don't know Government 101. Um, and uh, for the executive branch, we have about 91 agencies that we're responsible for, and we're rolling out uh, email and calendaring to begin with, and we're encouraging the rest of the Google Suite as we roll out. Our part of the organization, the administration, has rolled out the entire suite, removed our other products, and we are fully utilizing the Google Suite at this point. Awesome. So you have a choice in cloud providers. How did you evaluate the security of Google Cloud? So my team is the cyber disruption team for the state of Arizona. And so our responsibility is, as we move forward with technology, and again, our governor being a businessman, wants the state to move forward. They want, he wants us to be the leaders in the space. So we have to find ways Okay, how is this secure? We can't say no, we're not gonna move forward, we're not gonna evolve. So what we look at, um, being a government entity, we tend to rely on NIST, for example. We also uh, pay close attention to the Center for Internet Security, the top 20 things you can do to protect your organization. And what they've done is they've, if you're not familiar with that, Google that and, and get familiar with that. Um, because as a part of the red team, blue team exercises, at the end of those exercises, they said, what are the top 20 things you can do to better protect the organization? And that's where these came from. So we utilize both those kind of methodologies, as you will, to evaluate our technology as it comes in. 
Great, it's great to hear that you're using the NIST framework to evaluate your cloud providers. So from a threat and risk perspective, uh, how are you using Google Cloud and how is it able to help you? So the, there, I got some really cool stories on that. So when we started out, um, we ran all of our email through our old system. So it was our old email system, it was our old spam filter, then we passed it on to our Google system and ran it through that spam filter and then it went into the user's inboxes. Something that we didn't realize that actually happened, uh, first of all, the old system peels off about 86 to 90% of email coming in from the internet as spam to begin with. But when we implemented the Google spam filters, it peeled off in the first two months, it peeled off respectively 107,000 and 89,000 more emails as spam than what our old system was catching. In addition, it, uh, the, the way the Google system works is it has advanced heuristics that keep running in the background. So if it doesn't catch it right away, it'll continue to look at it as threats evolve. And in each of those months, we had an additional thousand emails pulled out of our users' inbox that were identified as malicious. It actually caused a problem for the security team because we, were, we had a, right when we were beginning to move the organization, we were converted to the Google system. The rest of our organization was not. We actually had a business email compromise attack and we were asking our users forward those emails so we can analyze them, we can see what's going on. When it got forwarded to us and put in the Google system, the Google system eliminated all of the, all of the uh, hostile things. So we're like, what's wrong with these emails? You know, there's nothing wrong with them. But our users using the old system still saw the hostile links and all the hostile attachments. So it was an interesting uh, effort. We also, one other cool story I gotta say is, we had, uh, coming from Arizona, you know, it only rains like twice a year. So uh, it did rain uh, three weeks ago and, and it caused a power outage downtown. And so our building was unavailable. Yeah, <laughs> our building was unavailable. Some people, you know, you have things like hurricanes and tornadoes, that takes things out. In Arizona, it's just rain. So um, basically, we had to tell our users, hey, don't show up for work be until noon because the power company was saying you can't restore power until about noon. So uh, all of us were productive. My team immediately utilized the G Suite spun up some meeting time and said, okay, everybody jump on this meeting and we can continue to work together and, and work with the other security officers in the organization. So we just worked from home. We just continued on what we were doing. Great. Well, Mike, thank you for coming up and you being bet. a customer from ours and sharing those stories with folks who are interested in security today. You so bet. thanks again. Thank you, Mike. Great. So now that you've heard from one of our customers, I want to talk about what we believe at Google about trust and security. So how do you actually build trust? Ironically, to build trust, you want to reduce the number of things you have to implicitly trust. So if you think about, from a technology point of view, defending a system from attackers, you want to have the attack surface as small as possible. Attackers want it as big as possible. As a defender, you want it as small as possible. So you, overall, you want to reduce the unknown. And we've applied the same thinking to building trust in our cloud. We want to shrink the unverifiable trust surface. So what is unverifiable trust surface? These are statements that are coming from me today that uh, you need to inherently believe because you think I'm a trustworthy person. We want to make that surface as small as possible. And the way we do this is with transparency. So let's talk about things we do to build a secure and trusted platform that then we can demonstrate to you is trustable through transparency. And we do three things. We build a secure platform, and we'll talk about how we've done that. We prove that it's secure in a bunch of different ways, including transparency. And then we keep it secure as the landscape evolves. So let's go into the first piece. So we've built a verifiable, secure foundation. And this starts with the hardware, the services, the storage, the identity, the infrastructure, the communication layers, our undersea cables that we own and have laid ourselves, and the operational security that sits on top of all of this. This is defense in depth and controls at every layer. We have a Titan hardware chip. So this is a chip that we've designed, which verifies the integrity of the hardware that we've manufactured ourselves, and it verifies the signature of the BIOS and the operating system and everything that rolls up from the physical hardware that we've manufactured. The more layers that we can add, the more layers in this defense and depth and integrity, the more secure the overall system becomes. And it's not additive. It's exponential, the amount of security. So again, this all sounds great. 
but I'm a vendor saying this. Why would you trust what I'm saying? You've likely heard other statements and other capabilities from other vendors. So to build that trust, we need to pull the curtain back. And the way we do that is with transparency. So we do transparency in four broad areas. First, we give transparency into our operations. So we've released a bunch of white papers that go into excruciating detail on how our operations work, how things are designed, how we've made uh, principal decisions around our design choices. So some examples of this are how we do encryption at rest and encryption in transit. If you haven't read those white papers, uh, it, it will ex you'll understand the depth of transparency and communication that we, want to, that we go through to try to make, make ourselves trustable in this, uh, in this area. Second, we provide transparency into requests for data. So we document the process we follow when a government or a legal enforcement action creates a request for data for our customers. In fact, we were the first platform to produce a transparency report. So we publish information in bulk where legally applicable to provide information about which governments and how many requests are coming to us that are uh, otherwise restricted from sharing. And we've seen hundreds of other companies, after we published our first reports, begin to publish this type of information. So we're very proud that we work with governments and we work very hard to make requests for information as transparent as possible to our customers. Third, we contractually detail and commit to how we operate and handle your data. So this includes stuff like our processing restrictions, data deletion, our incident response processes, our incident notification processes, and the security measures we have in place. So Mike and I have signed contracts together that detail how these things work, and this builds more trust because it's now written down and there's some signatures on it. Finally, we have a product called Access Transparency, which Jess is going to talk to in just a minute, that gives you detail and information about when Googlers access your data. This is unique to Google Cloud Platform, and we're very excited to uh, announce it in a few moments. So again, this is, all these things are good. Access Transparency is good. But these are more information about Google from Google. You want to go to the next level, trust but verify. And we work really, really hard, and we've made a lot of progress in the last six months, getting third-party audits and certifications in place. So this means that an independent auditor is very objective, has come in and examined the controls that are present, looked at what we state, what we claim about what we do, and verified and validated it. If you, as a customer, were going to come in, you would likely ask very similar related questions, and we do this in bulk with independent validators and auditors whose job it is to do this. And just this year, we've added major certifications like FedRAMP and High Trust, and we added 13 new products to our ISO and SOC coverage. And I'm happy to announce right now that we've increased the amount of customer-facing compliance documentation by 87% in the last six months. So go read and check out our compliance documentation. We're very excited to share this with you and, again, reduce the unverifiable trust surface. So I told you, here's how we build it. Here's the transparency to verify the claims we've made. Here's the third-party validation to further verify the controls that are in place and even that the transparency is in place. But at the end of the day, security is a shared responsibility. And as a developer and a customer, you build applications, services, and businesses that you're trying to make secure. So we work really hard and release products and services to make this as easy as it can be for you so you can build secure applications so your overall security posture can increase and that you can meet your policy and regulatory obligations because we know this is a big part of what you do every day. So with that, I wanted to highlight four key categories where our security products and services work. These capabilities go from the data center all the way to the end device, covering GCP, G Suite, our identity infrastructure, mobility, and devices. And many of these solutions work together. So the more you adopt of the Google Cloud security portfolio, portfolio, the more you become secure as an organization. So it's not one plus one plus one point solutions. The more of these you adopt, the more exponentially secure you become. And I'm very excited to say that earlier this year, in the last six months alone, we've made 20 product announcements that cover things in this portfolio. And we're not going to talk about any of them right now because we want to spend the next few minutes going through 10 new security announcements that we've made this week at Next. So with that, I'll get off stage. I want to bring Sam over here. Welcome, Sam. And Sam's going to frame up how our GCP security announcements and demos are going to go. Thank you. Uh, Nelly, do you want to join me and set up for the demo? 
we think of the work we do in security in four focus areas. Uh, infrastructure, trusted infrastructure, are the first. Identity and access management is the second. And threat detection and intelligence being the third. And privacy data protection and GRC being the fourth. You can think of this as a life cycle. You start with a platform that you can trust. That's what you're going to deploy things on. And that's the trusted infrastructure. What features does it give you to trust the platform? The next thing is that once you have on the platform, you have to deploy your resources. You set them up with identity and access management. Joe can set up this VM. Uh, Alice can set up uh, the other data store and stuff like that. And once you have your applications running and set up, you obviously monitor them. No security is perfect. And that's where our features in threat detection and intelligence come in. And finally, all applications create data. Data is obviously the lifeblood of information. And so you have to make sure you have the appropriate life cycle of privacy, encryption, data protection. That's our final uh, um, focus area. I'm going to speak to, in each, we have new features coming in each of these areas. I'm going to speak to the first two. And my colleague, Jess, is going to speak to the second to threat detection privacy. So let's look at trusted infrastructure first. I'm very proud to announce shielded VMs. So as, if you're running virtual machines, as you know, care and feeding for the base operating system image is a very critical security thing that you need to do. You don't want like a rootkit installed, or you don't want a driver which is out of date. You would like, most importantly, to know that when the machine boots, it's in a known state which is secure. And that's exactly what we're offering with shielded VMs today. We are offering images for Windows, Ubuntu, and container-optimized OS, which is what you would run below if you're running containers. And these uh, are curated images which tied to an underlying capability which our, which our platform has called virtual TPMs. In other words, our platform provides a TPM um, uh, virtualization for the, to the image, and the image boots up, and it does a trusted, secure boot and measurements that ensure that it's booted up in exactly the right state are available in the platform below, and you can verify those. And uh, let me give it to Nelly, senior PM in charge of this, to tell us how it works. Thank you so much, Sam. So thank you so much for coming to this presentation, first of all. Let me explain to you what and show you in real life what Shielded VMs are all about. Could we move the but, demo, please? Yes, please. <clears throat> and the most importantly, we're extending the security and verification trust that we have in our infrastructure based on our titans and exposing that to customers' VMs. Let me show you how and how easy it is going to be for customers to create Shielded VM. You're coming to Cloud Console, and it doesn't work. And again, let me try again. Uh, sorry for that. But minimum you know that we are not lying. It's all live. OK? <laughs> it's all verification. So let me try again. So I'm coming to a Cloud Console, and now it will work. And I will try to create a VM instance. All what I need to do, give a name for this instance, and select OS that I will be running in this VM. I would be able to filter out everything that is not shielded VM images and pick up only and only shielded VM because all of these capabilities that Sam is explaining, your trusted former secure boot, measure boot, and VTPMs available to every one of them. Let me pick up container optimized OS and select this image. We added security tab for you to opt out from some of this capability. If you will decide to do so, we highly recommend you do not touch them. And you create it. Nothing fancy. You can create a single VM. You can use template or instance template to create thousands of shielded VMs. And because it's so easy and it's free, by the way, Please <laughs> start using our public beta and provide us your feedback. But I want you to see, as soon as my VM God will work with me, also what it will take to ensure that capability is running. So sorry. Uh, let me. I have it done. OK. So we're trying to demonstrate to you what it will take 
for somebody to penetrate your VM because it's not trivial to again demonstrate we created the video. So let me play you a video. And the idea is you're booting from new shielded VMs. And as you're booting, we verify your uh, pre-boot sequence, your bootloader, your kernel, and we're creating all of this integrity setting and send it to stack driver to verify. But if anyone will try to boot not through trusted boot or trying to change even binaries when you're booting in your kernel, we immediately identify it and all the reports will be sent to you so you can take action on that. Thank you, Nelly. That was Thank really you great. So much. As you can see, it's uh, uh, as easy as that to ensure that what boots is exactly what you expect. Now, um, moving on, again in the trusted infrastructure focus area, we're very happy to announce binary authorization. If you're running containers, that's great, but you also obviously, as a uh, matter of discipline, when you're running something in production or let's say in a particular developer staging situation, you would like to know exactly what's running. You would not, for example, have someone make a miscue and run something in production which is not what which should not be running. Ideally, you want a very strong choke point which ensures that what you run is what you expect. And binary authorization is exactly a feature to, which we're introducing which enables you to do that in the infrastructure. So essentially, it's a signed VM, a signed container, and you can put in a gate where only containers signed by you can actually get deployed in particular situations by GKE. And you'll hear more about this from my colleague Jess as to how it integrates with a threat detection. The next vertical, the focus area I want to talk to you about is identity and access management. We are very happy to announce a suite of capabilities in our uh, platform called Context Aware Access. And the basic idea here is that usually you're aware of identity and access management as identity-based access. So this VM can only be uh, configured by people in this group, for example. However, you want more than that in, for, for true security. So for example, for a production uh, system where there's a very sensitive API, if maybe it shuts down the system, you might want to say it's this particular DevOps group. They have to have very strong authentication when they log in. The session's got to be very short. They can only do that when they are actually inside the corporate network as against remoting from the outside. And context-aware access enables you to make precisely these in as essentially rules which you state and the platform makes it so. So that was an example I gave you of an API access. You can also do it for applications you deploy. For example, you might have an employee-facing application which is very sensitive, and only finance people should see it, and only if they are on a company-issued laptop, and only if they are in the United States uh, on certain uh, IP addresses, and you can make that so. And finally, in G Suite, for example, you might decide to give your customer, uh, your users uh, control, for example, to read email from anywhere. However, you might want to make sure they're using uh, screen lock and they, they're, the disk they're using is encrypted so that if by some chance their device is, is lost, you won't uh, uh, have a compromise. And that's precisely what this allows. So context aware access is manifest in many features, VPC service control, cloud identity, cloud IAM, cloud IAP, and G Suite and uh, it's basically distributed in, uh, entirely throughout our platform. On identity and access management, again, another very uh, uh, a feature we're introducing today, which I'm very glad to uh, announce, is a Titan security key. And as you know, and I'm sure you're all aware, phishing is the, probably the most directly present threat that you have to your computing systems. However much you might secure them, you have to log in in the front door, and if your login is such that somebody can easily steal your login, they wouldn't even bother to break in from the back, they can as well just walk in through the front door. That's what phishing is about, fooling you into giving the password away to the bad guy, and if it's valuable enough, your OTP also. And remember, the OTP can, the OTP is a great step forward, but it's not enough of a step forward when it really, really matters. For example, shutting down a production system, or maybe your CEO's email or CFO's email just before the release on Wall Street. Uh, we designed security key as a phishing resistant mechanism, and I won't go into the detail here, but essentially it's custom designed to ensure that the server can make out if someone's trying to man in the middle you. We've had this feature for a few years now, and there are multiple vendors available for these devices, excellent vendors, but we have heard from some of you that you would like a Google provenance key, and we are very glad to announce that today. In this key, 
the firmware which goes in the secure element is written by Google and that root is trusted to us. So you have one more choice in your ecosystem. If you already have a trusted vendor, that's great. If you're looking for a vendor and you want Google provenance, we have something for you. It's available for direct order now for enterprise and will soon be available in the Google store. With that, I'm move on. let's move on to the next two focus areas. I'm going to ask Jess to come and take them on, which is threat detection and uh, data. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Sam. OK. So moving on to threat detection and intelligence. The first announcement we made today is container registry vulnerability scanning. Uh, these, this helps you identify security vulnerabilities early in the CI-CD pipeline. So we identify package vulnerabilities in Ubuntu, in Debian, in Alpine. We constantly keep those updated for you. Uh, and you can even, as a customer, insert your own vulnerability feeds uh, in order to expand on that. So pretty cool new functionality we just added. Yeah, so one of the ways in which it's particularly cool uh, is that it integrates with the binary authorization solution that uh, Sam just talked about. So you check in your code into the CI-CD pipeline. Uh, that automatically kicks off the uh, vulnerability scan. And then from there, if you are trusted, you get the signature for it. Uh, and then you are able to push into production. Binary authorization will allow you to push into production. If you are not trusted, however, then binary authorization will prevent you from going to production. What that means is that really for the first time, you can create an automated mechanism for ensuring that no code with vulnerabilities can ever make it into production. And that is, is a pretty big deal. The second area in threat detection and intelligence we wanted to talk about is Cloud Security Command Center. So the Security Command Center provides you with a single pane of glass that gives you uh, that gives you all of your uh, security uh, measurements and, and statistics in one spot. So we announced this back in March when we went into public alpha, uh, and we announced it with a, a, a pretty large set of security partners that were, were uh, integrated directly into the Security Command Center. So we, since then, have augmented that with a new set of partners focused on container runtime security. So the vendors you see here, Aqua, Sysdig, Capsulate, StackRox, Twistlock, these all provide uh, great insights into the state of runtime security, and their findings are plugged directly into the Cloud Security Command Center. Moving on to data protection and privacy. So a couple of interesting announcements here. The first one is our Cloud HSM. So we get a lot of requests for HSMs from customers. Uh, there's various reasons for that. Big one is compliance. So there's a lot of compliance requests. Uh, turns out it is way easier to get HIPAA compliance or PCI compliance, for example, if you have a uh, FIPS 140-2 uh, compliance uh, hardware crypto module. So a lot of requests from that. And also from a security perspective. So our customers enjoy the security aspects of HSMs. They are custom built for security. They are tamper proof. So if somebody attempts to access the key material or export the key material, the HSM simply wipes all the data. Uh, also, for some customers, it's an added benefit that the cloud provider, Google in this case, can't uh, see the raw key material on the device, so more private. So traditionally, HSMs have been notoriously difficult and expensive to manage. So you, you have this big CapEx investment up front of getting the thing uh, you know, in, in your uh, data center to begin with. And then you have the ongoing maintenance, the uptime, the, the uh, clustering, the scalability, the patching, et cetera. And so what we've done is create a fully managed service, completely abstracts away all of those pain points from the customer. As you can see on the, in the screenshot here, all you do, we're tightly integrated into Cloud KMS. You go into Cloud KMS and you specify that the key should come from an HSM. That's it. We do everything else for you. Uh, we even, from a cost perspective, uh, only have you pay for the HSM operations that you perform. So uh, it is all the benefits of an HSM without any of the maintenance or any of the uh, 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 sort of upfront cost. Last area in data protection is access transparency. So as Mike mentioned, we strongly believe fundamentally at Google in building trust through transparency. It's really important for us. And so uh, access transparency tells you exactly how and why your customer data has been accessed. And we provide you with full logs of all accesses by Google engineers to your data. 
We provide it for all of our customers, and we do so in near real time and service it for your convenience, either through the API or through the UI. So uh, we, we are the first cloud to provide this level of transparency, and we believe that everybody should expect that same level of transparency from all of the cloud providers you work with. So with that, I will hand over to Rena, and we will talk through some of the cool innovations in G Suite. Thank you, Jess. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Rina Nidkarni, and I lead product management for security and analytics on G Suite. So what's G Suite? Most of you are familiar with applications like Gmail, Calendar, Google Drive, and others. We have over 4 million paying businesses on G Suite. With big brand names like you know, Colgate, Palmolive, Roche, State of Arizona, Airbus, and others. There's been a lot of excitement. For those of you who were there in the G Suite collaboration and digital workforce transformation session this morning, where I spoke along with David Thacker, you saw that there is a lot of excitement around the collaboration and productivity gains that we are getting because of our machine learning efforts. But security is a big area of investment for us as well. So let's look at how we are using our efforts in machine learning to help protect our customers better. When I think about security, I think about three main things, intelligent, compliant, and simple. Let's talk about that. By intelligent, what do we mean? When you're thinking about building intelligent insights, data matters, size matters. Google has the capability to let you watch 500,000 high-definition videos on YouTube simultaneously. This scale allows us to absorb some of the most egregious denial-of-service attacks. Every minute on Google, we isolate over 10 million spam messages in Gmail. Almost 700,000 unwanted pieces of software are stopped from reaching Chrome users. And during that same minute, we also identify and isolate two phishing sites. Now just imagine if all of this was allowed to go out. We can do this because of the scale, because we are able to see more. Our network carries one-fourth of all of the traffic of the internet. And this is why we are able to get more insights, build better machine learning models to help protect you, our customers. Second, compliant. When you think about compliance, most of our customers who work in agencies like government, financial services, and healthcare have very stringent requirements. So we work with our customers, regulators, and auditors to help our customers along their compliance journey. And finally, simple. We want to keep things simple, both for the IT admins as well as for the end users. We talked a little bit about how machine learning as well as machines thrive when we give them a lot more data. Not the case with humans. So when you think about the IT admins, they are overwhelmed with the amount of data coming their way. And it's really difficult for them to be able to distinguish the signal from the noise. This is where we have the security center for G Suite that we have announced. So the first two parts, think about this as three main parts. Security health. This gives you best practice recommendations from Google. So it shows you everything that you have set up for your organization and a nice green checkbox if you're adhering to our best practice. And if in areas you are deviating from our recommended best practices, you can go ahead and then make those changes. Second, we have the security dashboards. This gives you insights from your mobility, login activity, drive activity, all of that together in one dashboard. And finally, the newly announced at Next yesterday, the security investigation tool. This investigation tool is a powerful capability. What this allows you to do is that go across different corpuses of data, quickly isolate, and bring about change when someone is trying to attack your organization. To show you a demo of the security tool, I would like to invite my colleague, Sam, to take it over from here. Sam? Thank you, Rina. Hi, I'm Sam Lugani. I work on G Suite Security. 
and I'm here to walk you through an admin's journey from prevention to detection to remediation, all within the Security Center. Now, Security Center, as Rena talked about, has three major components, security health, security dashboards, and the investigation tool. Let's take a look at security health. Now, with security health, we're going through all the different settings, security settings within G Suite, and we're mapping them to Google's best practice recommendations. The settings would map correctly to Google's best practice recommendations, get this beautiful green checkbox on the right, and the settings which don't get a recommendation as to why an admin should change that setting. One of the settings I'm most concerned with is the spoofing and authentication safety setting, which is turned on for this domain. Next up is security dashboards. Now, with security dashboards, we're taking a lot of information, analyzing that information, and we're bubbling up the most important insights which matter to an admin right at the top. And this is critical for an admin because as an admin walks in, uh, they see these charts, and it looks like there's been some spoofing activity within the domain. Now, an admin wants to see which users are being targeted within, our, within this domain. The admin can click on this spoofing activity and right away uh, can see a few users which have been targeted. Looks like there's an email with subject line access your 401k, which has been sent to a few users. Now, this is quite concerning. Now, right from the dashboard, the admin can jump into the investigation tool and see which users within his organization have gotten the same email. And looks like more than a few users have gotten this email with the subject line access your 401k account now from someone that is external to the organization. Now, at this point, as an admin, I want to figure out Amongst the users who received this email, has anyone opened this email? So right from the investigation tool, I can pivot and directly go to the users which have opened this email. Looks like Sam within my organization has opened this email. Now, that's quite concerning because Sam's account might be compromised, and a classic technique which attackers use is compromise the beachhead account and then use that account to laterally spread within the organization. So, at this point, I want to see if Sam's account is compromised. Has Sam, or really the attacker, which is posing as Sam, sent any emails, suspicious emails, to other users within my organization? So I can pivot right from Sam's, this search, and see that from Sam's account, there's been the set of emails with the subject, please confirm login now, sent within my organization. Now, I can do a couple of things here. I can bulk delete all these emails right from the investigation tool, which is pretty cool. Across your organization, you can look at suspicious emails and delete them with one click across all users within your organization. But I want to investigate more. If Sam's account is compromised and if Sam has sent email to all these users trying to compromise their accounts, these users might have shared files outside. And my company is working on two really critical projects. So from the investigation tool, I want to see if these users have shared any files publicly or outside the organization. So again, right from the investigation tool, I can pivot on this search, and I can see files which have been shared outside the organization by looking for visibility changes on drive files. And it looks like a couple of files have been shared. Now again, right from the investigation tool, I can select all these files, click on audit file permissions, which directly takes me to the investigation tool audit permissions. And from here, I can see that financial projections has been shared with Kelly at shadowplus.in, which is not part of my organization. The same thing with Project Roadmap 2019 and Project Atlas. I can, right from here, revoke access to Kelly or anyone else outside the organization. So that was a quick summary of the security center. We moved from prevention with security health, we moved to detection with security dashboards, and finally, uh, finally remediation with uh, the investigation tool. Now, this is a lot of power to the admin, and we want to make sure that these features and this capability is only offered to super admins within G Suite. With that, I'll hand it over back to Rena. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. When we were building the security investigation tool, we, do, we did a lot of user research with our customers. So it really warms my heart to see this quote from one of the CIOs of our customers saying that they felt like we were really listening and meeting their requirements. We talked a little bit about how we are supporting you with respect to gathering data and being able to quickly isolate incidences. Do you know that in G Suite, we also take your data security very seriously. We encrypt your data at rest. 
we encrypt your data in transit. And in addition to that, yesterday at Next, we announced the data regions capability. What data regions capability allows you to do is that you can choose where your data resides between the US, Europe, or globally. This is a very flexible capability, which allows you to define as many organizational units as you want and assign data regions to it. It's also very flexible. So if I have a file, I'm the file owner, and I transfer that file over to Sam, and he's based in Europe, without you having to do anything, the data regions policy will automatically change when the file ownership changes. Another thing that is my favorite part is that during this entire data move, you do not lose access to your content. You have full edit capability during the data move. The data regions functionality is available both in the G Suite business as well as the G Suite enterprise at no extra cost. So what more are we promising our customers with G Suite in the enterprise? One question I often get is that, hey, you're Google, what about ads? Let's state that clearly. Google does not scan, use your data in G Suite for ads. We do not display ads in G Suite. We also aim to never lock you in into G Suite, so you can always delete or export your data at any time. So to summarize, we talked about three things. We talked about how G Suite helps increase productivity and collaboration by using cloud-based technologies. We talked about how, with advances like the G Suite Security Center and the investigation tool and the data regions functionality, we are giving you, our customers, more control and security over your data. And finally, we are committed to helping our customers in their compliance journey. With that, I would like to call Mike back on stage to tell us about our partner ecosystem. Mike? Thank you, Rena. So we all know, as security professionals, that security takes a village. It takes a community. Security is not the largest group of technologists in the world. It's a small community in the grand scheme of things. And we know that you, as customers, have security vendors with which you work, and that your security partners need to be our partners in Google Cloud. And this only works if we're all successful together. So we've been spending a lot of time on this, and I want to announce right now that in the last six months alone, we have increased our security partner ecosystem by more than 200%. And the priority list that we used for which partners we worked with came from you, our customers. So as you told us you needed to work with a specific partner, we worked to cut a deal and make it work with them. So if you're here today as a partner, thank you. And if you told us about a partner you wanted to work with as a customer, thank you. And in fact, you're welcome to go visit these folks on the first floor of this building in our security showcase. And uh, if there's a partner that's not there that you work with today that you need to make work on GCP, come tell us. So to wrap things up, trust is key to everything that we do. And we create trust through transparency. And we're constantly working to reduce the implicit trust surface so that you can verify what we're saying. We also work really hard to make it easy for you to secure your data and secure your people on Google Cloud. We made 10 announcements, which have highlighted our recent investments in improving cloud security and the security of the ecosystem overall. And finally, the story's not over. We're continuing to invest heavily in this area, and we're going to continue to innovate and want to work to solve these tough security problems with you, our customers, as our partners. So thank you, appreciate your attention. Uh, we want you to visit our other security sessions that are happening today, and we've got a security showcase downstairs. Uh, we also will answer any detailed questions you have after the session. But before I go, I wanted to uh, invite everybody to pick up a security key, which Sam mentioned, uh, they're in the back. And the point here is, this is the one thing you can do like in the next hour to improve the security for your admins of your accounts. So please go pick up a security key and make sure that your admins are using them. So thank you so much for your attention.